Hello everyone, we're getting together today to sew our Kebron and Kebron Kids sailor t-shirt and dress pattern. The sailor shirt is a timeless wardrobe classic that goes with everything and suits everyone. It's designed for knit fabrics to guarantee your comfort. Kebron is available in numerous versions to suit all tastes. It's an easy pattern that's just right for sewing beginners. Let's take a look at the different options available. First, the length. Kebron is available as a top that reaches the hips or as a dress that stops above the knees. The neckline features the traditional boat neckline, but also a high collar for cooler seasons. Sleeves are available in four lengths, short, three quarters, long with cuffs or long without cuffs. For children, the left shoulder is buttoned to facilitate the passage of the head. For women, this opening is optional. Another option, only available for women, is a slit on the sides of the top or the dress. The finishing touch is the optional chest pocket. Since this pattern is designed to be made in knit, I recommend sewing directly on the serger. The use of this machine is not mandatory, and knit fabrics can be sewn on a sewing machine. In fact, you can find a technical video on the subject on our channel, where I explain all my techniques. In this video, I'll mainly be using the serger to do my stitching, but keep in mind that the steps will be the same if you're stitching by machine. When you say sailor t-shirt, you also say stripes. On our channel, you'll find a technical video on how to match stripes, in which we share our tips for creating garments with impeccable pattern and stripe matches. You can use any knit to sew your sailor t-shirt or dress. You could, for example, choose jersey, French terry, waffle jersey, full milano knit, interlock, or brushed sweatshirt. The key is to use a stretchy material for a comfortable garment. For the pocket, on the other hand, you can use a non-stretch fabric in warp and weft. As for supplies, we'll need fine woven interfacing for the button placket, a special jersey or stretch needle for sewing the pocket, finishing the neckline, and assembling your sailor t-shirt on the sewing machine. I strongly recommend that you get a double jersey or stretch needle here too, for finishing worthy of ready-to-wear garments, but it's not essential. We'll also need buttons for the shoulder opening. I recommend buttons between 9 and 12 millimeters in diameter. You can also use snaps with the same diameter. To finish, you'll need a 3 centimeters band cut in the bias or store-bought bias binding, to finish the boat neckline. The length you'll need varies according to size and is available in your tutorial. Here we have a sailor t-shirt in French terry navy and off-white. It's a top version with three quarters length sleeves and a boat neckline. On the left shoulder is a button placket to facilitate the passage of the head and small alabaster colored buttons. Here's a little sailor t-shirt for summer in organic jersey with an Icelandic motif. It's a short sleeve top version. The chambray pocket adds a touch of cuteness to the garment. The boat neckline is fastened with twilight colored buttons. When the weather cools down, here's a long sleeve top version with cuffs in Ikati's Petticoat, red organic jersey. It features a high collar and placket fastened with mahogany buttons. Finally, Here's a dress version, perfect for an early spring stroll. I made it in striped linen and Baltic jersey. It's a long-sleeved version with a boat neckline and twilight buttons. For women, we start with this classic version of the sailor t-shirt. It's made in white and navy striped jersey. It's a top version with three-quarters sleeves, a boat neckline and a discreet chest pocket. This time, both shoulders are closed this is a short-sleeved top in fine, sand and off-white, striped jersey. There's slits at the bottom and a button placket. I chose pecan buttons to match the fabric. Now here's a long-sleeved top in white and red striped jersey. A high collar and a pocket in plain red jersey enhance this sailor t-shirt. This version doesn't have a button placket. And finally, here's a dress in navy full meal on own it. It has long sleeves with cuffs and a high collar. This time we've got a button placket on the shoulder, fastened with gold buttons to give the dress a chic edge.
we'll start by interfacing the shoulder button placket. If your fabric is thick and or stiff, like a full Milan on it or sweatshirt, this step won't be necessary. The front and back shoulders are interfaced on the wrong side. Place our interfacing piece and iron without steam until the glue has melted. Now it's time to overcast the selvages. Knit fabrics don't fray, so overcasting is not essential. It does, however, make for a cleaner finish and flattens the rolled edges. Overcast the bottom of the top or dress, front and back, the bottom of the short three quarters and long sleeves without cuffs, and the top of the pocket, but also the left shoulder of the top or dress, front and back, for the shoulder button placket version. As a small detail, we take care to cut the front and back so that the opening is on the left shoulder. To make sure you don't make a mistake, place the pieces with the right side of the piece and the right side of the fabric facing us. We can now pre-iron the tucks. For women, all tucks are two centimeters. For children, they are 1.5 centimeters everywhere except at the shoulder, where the tuck is 2 centimeters. So we'll fold and press the lower body, the left shoulder front and back, the bottom of the short three quarters and long sleeves without cuffs, and the top of the pocket. To make ticks, I use two little techniques to simplify my life. The first, which you've just seen, is simply to use a small ruler like this which you can iron on. I place my ruler on the wrong side of the fabric, fold over the edge of my piece, and adjust the position of my ruler so that the tuck is the desired value. The second step I'll show you here is to use a heat erasable pen to draw marks at a distance of twice the tuck value. For example, here the tuck is 1.5 centimeters, so I draw it three centimeters. I can then fold in my tuck by matching the edge of the selvage with my little marks. You can see that the final length of my tuck is 1.5 centimeters. Now that it's folded, you can top stitch the pocket top tuck at 1.5 centimeters for women and one centimeter for children. You can use a zigzag, stretch or straight stitch with a double needle. Here's how it works for each stitch. Here the stretch stitch, the double needle straight stitch and the zigzag stitch. My favorite technique is the double needle straight stitch. It really looks like professional sewing. We'll be able to fold in one centimeter tucks on the other three sides of the pocket. This one centimeter value is the same for women and children. To make things easier, We'll use the cardboard template supplied with the pattern. We place it in the center of the pocket, aligning the top ends and ironing the sides. Our pocket is ready to be sewn. We place it on the front according to the mockings and pin all the way around. Here, my pocket doesn't quite match my mockings, because my ticks on the sides aren't exactly one centimeter apart. If this is the case for you too, no problem, just iron again or center your pocket on the mockings. We can now top stitch the three sides of the pocket on the sewing machine using a straight stitch two millimeters from the edge. Here's how it looks once the pocket has been sewn. Don't hesitate to unstitch and redo if your sewing isn't regular enough. Now it's time to assemble the sides of the garment. Start by aligning the front and back selvages, pinning or using clips, and stitching both sides at 7mm for children and 1cm for women. This is how it looks when stitched on the serger. As mentioned above, you can also stitch on a sewing machine, and this is what it looks like when you do. If you're making a women's top with the slit option, You'll need to stitch on the sewing machine. Align the front and back selvages, pin and stitch at one centimeter using a stretch or zigzag stitch to the slit mark at the bottom of the garment. You can now press the seams open and at the same time iron the slits in continuity with the side seam allowances.
Sewing knit fabrics by machine can distort the material, and in this case my sides are no longer the same length. To remedy this, you need to unstitch and start again, modifying the machine settings or using thin paper, as I show you in the technical video on how to sew knit fabric on a sewing machine. Now it's time to move on to the collar. For now, we'll take a look at the steps to be taken with the shoulder opening option, available for women and constant for children. Start by placing the right shoulder front and back right sides together. Pin and stitch at 7mm for children and 1cm for women using a sewing machine or a serger. For the high collar version, fold the collar in half with right sides together and pin the ends together. Stitch at 7mm for children and 1cm for women, then turn the collar inside out, making sure the corners stand out. Next, align the neckline and collar edges right sides together and pin, matching the muckings. Fold the button placket wrong side out over the collar at both ends. and stitch at 7mm for the children and 1cm for women. For the boat neckline version, we start by folding in two and ironing a band of store-bought bias binding or a 3cm band of fabric cut in the bias. Pin the bias binding right sides together on the neckline edges. Start pinning at one shoulder and continue to the second. We don't need the mockers here. Any excess bias binding can be trimmed off as you near the end. For a clean finish on the right side, we need to fold the button placket over to the right side and under the bias binding at both ends. This also means we don't have to tuck in the bias binding ends as they will be hidden later. Finally, we stitch at 7mm for children and 1cm for women using the serger or the sewing machine. Here's how it looks once sewn. You can now turn the bias binding and button placket inside out on the wrong side of the garment, remembering to emphasize the corners. Iron in what's known as a seam roll, which simply means folding in one millimeter from the seam so that the bias binding won't show on the right side afterwards. As you can see, a small part of the main fabric is visible on the wrong side when I iron. Check that the bias binding doesn't stick out on the right side and pin all the way around the neckline. This step is not essential, as the bias binding has already been ironed in place. However, it will help us achieve a nice, even top stitch. If you'd like to add a label, size label for example, pin it in the middle of the back. The shoulder and neckline can now be top stitched in a single operation. Start stitching in the shoulder seam allowance and stitch 1.5 cm from the edge to 7 mm before the neckline. Leave the needle in the fabric, turn the fabric 90 degrees and continue stitching, this time at 7 mm, all along the neckline. At the second shoulder, we stop 1.5 cm from the edge, turn the needle 90 degrees and continue stitching all the way to the end. Now that the collar or neckline is finished, we overlap the left shoulder front on the left shoulder back by 2 cm, matching the selvages. Pin and hold the shoulders together by stitching in the om hole seam allowances. And here's what the top of the garment with the shoulder opening looks like when finished. Here with the high collar and here with the boat neckline. Now we move on to assembling the collar or boat neckline if you're making the women's version without a shoulder opening. Start by placing the shoulder front and back right sides together pinning and stitching at one centimeter. Repeat on the other shoulder, as I've already done here. For the high collar, fold the collar in half, right sides together, 
and pin the ends together. Stitch at one centimeter along the height. Now fold the collar right sides out and iron. Ironing it well now will make the final ironing easier when the product is finished. Place the neckline and collar edges right sides together. First pin the mockings, matching the neckline seam to the center back of the garment. Then stretch the neckline quarters to pin the rest. Stitch all around at one centimeter. For the boat neckline, start by folding in two and ironing a band of store-bought bias binding or a three centimeters band of fabric cut in the bias. Pin the bias binding right sides together on the neckline edges. I start a few centimeters before the shoulder seam and continue all the way around. When I return to my starting point, I trim any excess bias binding. To get a clean finish, we'll tuck in the unpinned end of the bias binding and wrap it around the second end. The edge of the tuck must be aligned with the shoulder seam, as shown here. Finally, stitch one centimeter all the way around the neckline using the serger or machine. The bias binding can now be turned inside out on the wrong side. I start by cutting in the bias binding's seam allowances to reduce any excess thickness. To make things easier afterwards, I fold the bias binding with my fingers to give it the final shape I want to achieve. This is an optional step that will work particularly well with cotton bias bindings, which are quite stiff. I iron the bias binding with the famous rolled seam technique we talked about earlier. The bias binding is folded one millimeter from the seam so as not to show on the right side when worn. And voila, the bias binding is ironed and invisible on the right side. We pin, making sure the bias binding doesn't show on the right side, and stitch 7 mm from the neckline edge all the way around. If you'd like to add a label, size label for example, pin it in the middle of the back. And here's the result at the top of our garment with the shoulders closed. Here with the boat neckline, and here with the high collar. Now it's time to assemble the sleeves. For all versions, start by folding the sleeves in half with right sides together. Align and pin the edges of the undersleeves together. Finally, stitch at seven millimeters for children and one centimeter for women. Short three quarters and long sleeves without cuffs are finished with a tuck at the bottom. The tuck, previously ironed, is folded back by two centimeters for women and 1.5 centimeters for children. Pin and stitch all around the bottom of the sleeves with the sewing machine at 1.5 centimeters for women and 1 centimeter for children. I'll show you how to stitch the sleeve, which has a small circumference on the sewing machine. The sleeve is placed on its wrong side so that it can be stitched on the right side. The risk would be to stretch the fabric when stitching the hem, so our trick is to place the presser foot inside the sleeve and stitch as if rolling the sleeve around the foot. This way, the sleeve is never stretched. I remove the pins as I stitch. You can stitch with a double needle, as I do here, or with a zigzag stitch. The advantage of stripes is that I can use them as a guide to stitch my hem regularly. Here you can see that I have one needle stitching in an off-white stripe and the second in navy. By following this guide, my hem is super regular. Here's how it looks when sewn. For the long sleeves with cuffs, we'll fold the cuffs lengthwise right sides together, pin the ends together and stitch at seven millimeters for children and one centimeter for women. 
Then fold the cuffs wrong sides together, this time vertically, and press well. Finish by placing and aligning the selvages of the bottom sleeves right sides together with those of the cuffs. If your fabric is patterned as shown here, you'll need to make sure that the cuffs run in the same direction as the sleeves. Pin the turn, matching the under sleeve seam with the cuff assembly. Repeat with the second cuff. Then stitch at 7mm for children and 1cm for women. Finish assembling the sleeves by threading them into the body right sides together. Align the on hole selvages, matching the mockings, and pin well. For the assembler seams, lay the margins on opposite sides to avoid over thickness. Finish by stitching at 7mm for children and 1cm for women. And here's how the different sleeves look when assembled on the garment. We have short sleeves, 3 quarter sleeves, long sleeves with cuffs and long sleeves without cuffs. Now it's time to finish the lower body. For children's versions and women's tops and dresses without slits, We'll reshape the tuck at the bottom of the top or dress, which is 2 cm for women and 1.5 cm for children. Pin the turn and stitch at 1.5 cm for women and 1 cm for children. Stitch with a double needle straight stitch or zigzag stitch. For women's versions with side slits, we'll reshape the bottom tuck. Fold the tuck 2 cm right sides together and pin. I do the same at the other three ends. Stitch 7 mm from the selvage along the tuck. Repeat on the other end and do the same on the second side. You can now turn the tuck over to the wrong side, making sure that the corners stand out. The tuck will form naturally after ironing. If necessary, iron again if the fold is no longer sufficiently marked, and pin all the way around. Now stitch the bottom of the garment and the slit in a single stroke. Here's how it looks. I start my stitching on one side, just after the slit, and stitch 1.5 cm to the other side. When I'm 5 mm from the slit, I leave my needle planted in the fabric, and turn my work 90 degrees under the presser foot. I stitch along my slit, 5 mm from the edge, like this. I then pick up the bottom stitch, stitching 1.5 cm from the edge. When I reach my second slit, I repeat these steps and finish my seam stitch in stitch with the beginning. The last thing to do if you're making the shoulder opening is to embroider the button holes following the mockings on the front shoulder and sew the buttons opposite on the back shoulder. If you prefer, you can also attach snaps following the mockings. And that's it. Your Kebron Sailor T-shirt or dress is now complete. We hope we've been able to help you and that you enjoy your garment. If you like this video, don't hesitate to like it and subscribe to our channel. We can't wait to see your creations. So join us on Instagram with the hashtag Ikati Kibron. See you soon at Ikati.